next, The Final Frontier. These are the episodes of You Tried Dead. It's tasty mission to explore strange new snacks, to seek out new drinks and new refreshments, to boldly chew what no mouth has mouthed before. You tried it. You tried that. The outer space episode. I'm your host, Nick Novak, with my pal Shad Hancock. Hello from outer space. <laughs> Nick Geiger. Take me to your leader. <laughs> I'm what an alien. The, who are you supposed to be, Chad? An alien? Uh, no, this is me talking. Look, I'm in outer space. I'm just saying hello from there. <laughs> Astronauts shout to you from space. Haven't you heard them? Why did we send this asshole into space? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst choice to send in space. I'm just going to be up there the whole time, like, fuck, I forgot to bring my switch. <laughs> now I just gotta stare at these stars all day Can you load up another shuttle uh, And fire up 1.4 million Reese's Cups in outer space I'll pick it up around Jupiter, <laughs> thanks I actually did um, I did this thing when I was a kid I just remember I think it was maybe 5th grade or something Where they were doing this um, You had to sign up for it And then it was supposed to be like a, a space station simulation Right? And then they picked uh, like 24 or something random kids. And I got picked as one of them. And it was two shifts of 12. And they had built the, in the school, they built this whole fake space station, which was basically just like a bunch of little rooms made out of cardboard and stuff, you know, inside one of the classrooms. Impressive. Um, <laughs> and then and then they put like this group of kids in there. And then you're the kids are not allowed to come out for 12 hours. And like they're supposed to be... Um, like conducting experiments and like some of the stuff in there, like some scientific experiments or whatever. And then it was even like uh, if you if you if, if the kid had to go to the bathroom, you had to like uh, you know get on the walkie-talkie and say that you had to go to the bathroom. And they would wheel this cart up to the entrance of the space station that was like covered. You know, it almost looked like it when when you're at a hotel and like room service or comes by or whatever, and they're pushing a cart and there's like a giant tablecloth draped over it or whatever. It's kind of like that. And you had to crawl into the middle area. So you're surrounded by a curtain and like, you can't see anything. And then they would wheel you down the hallway to the school bathroom and then you could get out and like go take a shit or whatever. And then <laughs> why? <laughs> Cause that's what it's like in real space when you get wheeled over to a <laughs> school bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and, and like the whole thing like exactly it wasn't even realistic like i took a shit and like my my shit wasn't floating at all it was like full gravity effect i didn't took to, totally took out the immersion there was nothing random about this yeah pick. they said let's put that little shit in there for 12 hours i don't want to see his face <laughs> <laughs> Hey, kid, you don't want to eat one fucking carrot? Get in this box. <laughs> yeah. That shit <laughs> It's definitely trying to get rid of me. <laughs> so I got picked for the night shift, which was, you know, I don't know, like 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. or something. And I, stupidly, because I'm like a dumb little kid, I didn't bother to, like, sleep that day. I'm like, I stayed up the whole day like normal and then went in. And so I'm completely exhausted, like sluggishly crawling around this thing. And they had cameras in there. So they were like watching us. And if you weren't like doing the stuff that you were supposed to do, they would be like, Chad, you're supposed to be, you know, what, watching this plant grow or whatever the fuck the different science wait, wait, experiments were. Who is watching you? Like the teachers. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, well, it might have been NASA. I'm not sure. Chad, you're supposed to be wiping your ass now. <laughs> Chad, you're supposed to be slowly eating that banana. No, that's it. No, just eat it just like that. <laughs> and so what? I was I was so tired that I found I found the one area of the um of the thing that was not like covered by the cameras, which was just like right around the corner of one of the doors and the rooms. 
was like kind of hidden from camera view and i and i plopped down there and slept for like three or four hours <laughs> and i guess they just thought i was doing an experiment over in the corner or they probably knew and didn't give a shit <laughs> schools barely have budget to buy books now and they had, back then they had this budget to waste everyone's fucking time for nine hours well you did this bullshit in the dark yeah so what did you learn uh, I, I, I learned that I shouldn't like stay up all night like that because I came I came home the next day and then just slept for like twenty hours straight like I was so tired. How many kids? So there's twenty four kids were picked. Yeah. How many at a time? You had a shift, so like how many were in the box with you? Yeah, it was like it was like two shifts with like twelve kids each or something. <laughs> You were the only kid, and they said, uh, yeah, we put all 23 other kids in the other shift, so get in the back. <laughs> get <out> there. <laughs> so, like, whose job was it to constantly be wheeling these kids to the bathroom? I think it was it was another teacher. Like, it was another teacher's job, I think. And this was a – so the thing you, you were in was, like, a size of a classroom, or is it just a big box? Yeah, it was a classroom that they had divided into gotcha. a bunch of small cardboard rooms, but that but they had ceilings in it. Like the ceilings weren't very high, mm-hmm. so in some of the rooms you actually had to crawl on like your hands and knees to like kind of get through it, and then other rooms you could actually stand up in. It was actually pretty intricate. I I don't know how long it took him. Some I just imagine some like science teacher who like hates his family. And so he's just looking for an excuse to like stay at work and like build this fucking thing for like three years. This is his life's work, just so he doesn't have to see his shitty kids. Hold on, I've nearly perfected the bathroom cart. <laughs> One more drapery yeah. over here. He's like staring at these cameras while these kids are <laughs> hiding in blind spots trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> crazed mad scientist where do they all go yeah. <laughs> yeah looking back on it as an adult it was pretty fucked up it was probably like just some teacher that like really hated he like picked the kids that he really hated and he's just i'm gonna fuck with these kids for 24 hours <laughs> i'm just imagining you like waiting for you to slowly doze off and getting the mic and like look at that potato grow the potato just yelling at the microphone <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you like wake up <laughs> check for saturn's moons i don't know look out the window <laughs> did you wake up from that sleep and you were chained to the cardboard wall and they said the only way to get the key <laughs> is to saw your leg off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. that was it and we had to wear we had to wear these little um like a- like fake astronaut suits you know which was basically just like these white one piece like made out of the cheapest fabric that they bought at michaels or whatever <laughs> so it was definitely some teacher getting off on all this he's like got this weird fetish of seeing some kids in white one piece suits that he hand sewed himself or whatever did, did they also watch you in cameras while you changed into the suit <laughs> no <laughs> yes one leg at a time chad <laughs> And there was there's like a there was a news article about it actually in the newspaper that I had up until I bet. <laughs> yeah, it was called Teachers Arrested District <laughs> Bankrupt from Useless Science Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher arrested for pedophilia, I think that's the, the title of that article. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was um I had that news article. I found it to going through my stuff like a couple years ago, like maybe two, three years ago, I found it in my closet and I was like, all right, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> that went in the recycle bin. <laughs> Teacher devises most elaborate plan to get kids to pee on camera. <laughs> The idea of using the whole school budget. (laughs) That is bizarre. I mean, it sounds interesting, but that's bizarre. So, do you guys like space? (laughs) (laughs) Space, colon, thoughts? (laughs) I love, I actually, we were talking about this just before we started. Um, I love space, like I always thought space camp as a kid would be fun when you see those commercials for space camp and stuff. But uh, I love like reading, I read like a ton of science fiction stuff. And here's a a promotion for the best space book I've ever read was the uh, recently 
translated uh, Chinese book called a uh, series called The Three Body Problem. And the guy, like, descri- the way he describes space and, like, its vastness and uh, is just outstanding. That does so, not sound like a space book. No. It sounds like a thing, like, the subtitle is, like, The Three Body Problem, colon, How Not to Do an Orgy Correctly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> the Three Body Problem. My, my elementary school science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Three kids needed to shit at the same time. <laughs> we only had one shit cart. <laughs> the three body problem. How I had to kill those three fucking kids left in that science fair. <laughs> it, it basically is about like... Uh, three bodies? I mean, this guy is like a real downer, downer type of view on uh, first contact, but about how if we ever were to meet aliens like more than likely like they'll try to kill us and it's so like and it talks about how more than likely we'll try to kill them (laughs) humans are fucking assholes (laughs) it talks about how there's just so many like different species likely out there right um that like the the chance of them being more advanced like there's some that are clearly far more advanced than us uh to the point where they're like just going around killing every civilization that is less advanced than them Ah, the old Independence Day viewpoint. <laughs> right. Um, but it's like it's 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 smartly done and it's really well written and the guy's like a good author, not just it's not just a good story, he's a good author. So um that is that would be my plug for that. But I always found space interesting. Gaggard, what are, what are your thoughts on space? Um <laughs> Space colon like thoughts. <laughs> you know guys, I'm sure there's a lot of it. No, uh... <laughs> when it comes to space we're not gonna run out anytime soon am i right guys <laughs> um, well, isn't like the thought of go- go- we've seen people go to mars like super interesting that we'll see that in our lifetime yeah i i think it's interesting i i never i don't know enough about it like it's never a topic that i really studied a lot as a kid i was interested in different stuff then uh i like science fiction a lot like i love like star wars and all that kind of stuff but nothing actual based in fact so the very realistic depictions of space like star wars we're gonna get to tatooine no but but, uh i mean i like like no was saying i like science fiction and i like space-based science fiction but i don't um i I never had a big interest growing up uh in space although I, i find it pretty fascinating now so yeah the thought that we might actually put someone on mars or the thought that they you know, the, now that the rich people can basically like they're they're going to start taking trips to space, like charging people for trips to space would be interesting. Uh, never something I never thought would be conceivable uh, during our life period. I would pay like almost any amount of money to go into outer space. Yeah, like I would empty my entire life savings to do that. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I mean, it's pretty rigorous physically still, right? All the G, like all the the G units that they have to test right. you for, and like all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. You have to be in very good shape to do it. Um, but I'm sure that'll improve too as like space technology gets better. I heard that NASA, like, in order to simulate what it will be like <laughs> on Mars, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, they're, yes. looking for, they're looking for 24 volunteers. And... <laughs> <laughs> they just completed getting a new contract from the federal government for a whole fleet of shit carts. <laughs> so they're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> that was like when when um i don't know if you guys read the legislation when obama canceled the um shit card space shuttle program yeah his reason was like not enough shit cards <laughs> <laughs> like they couldn't do- agree on the type of material to c- cloak the people in a shit of night um <laughs> Yeah, to be clear, you're going in the bathroom. You're not shitting in the cart. You're, it's just this transport vehicle. <laughs> so, Speak for yourself, my friend. <laughs> That's why it got canceled. This kid kept shitting on the cart. We had to hose it down. I don't get paid for this shit. I'm shitting in that blind spot. I'm not, not going to know who did it. <laughs> no back to somebody no become back. a homeless person inside this experiment. You get in and you're immediately crawling around like, all right, where can I shit? You're going to find all the places I can shit. <laughs> um, no, you guys, I, I actually do believe that there's probably other alien life forms out there somewhere. I have a hard time believing For sure there the is. vastness yeah. of space There's were no the question. only people that are sentient and living. Novak, do you think we're the only ones? Oh, well, of course not. I, uh, 
think there, <laughs> I think there are many countless other people out there. Um, and what I would like from them is for them to send us some snacks <laughs> so that we can try them because that's what we do on this podcast. And that's yeah. what we're going to do. We're going to try some, uh, snacks. And I've been looking forward to this episode because, um, some pretty good ones here today, but we do a five point scale where it's a love debt, like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, or hate debt. Um, and I think we should start off with the astronaut ice cream because it's the most uh, interesting of them. I'm anxious to get at it. And I remember this stuff when, from when I was a kid and um, went to this, the science and industry uh, museum nearby and they would sell this. And I definitely had had it a few times, but I probably haven't had it since I was about 10. Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago is where we used to get it all the time, too. But I've never had this. Uh, this is like an ice cream sandwich flavor. I, we always, I feel like it was always like Neapolitan when I would get it. Yes, me too. This is also from the Museum of Science and Industry. That's where I got this from. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, we took our kids. So it's a, the package is like freeze-dried um, feel to it. So you open it up, and then you can feel it expand. Uh and the brand just seems to be called <laughs> Astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> so if you around the country would like to eat this, apparently the only way I know you can get it is to fly to Chicago and attend the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, the best part is the picture on front, which shows <laughs> a guy in full astronaut gear, uh, <laughs> seemingly on Mars, um, and he's holding an ice cream sandwich in his hand. <laughs> but, but he's got his visor down. So how the hell is he going to eat? He's just going to jam it against the front of his visor. And you can see the Curiosity rover and the reflection on his thing. So you know that, like, Curiosity is just looking at him like, this fucking idiot can't even eat an ice cream sandwich. Oh, is that the rover? I assumed that was the shit cart. It's going to take him back to <laughs> Back to the shuttle. Oh yeah, there, well, there was that mission that actually that just succeeded, where NASA was the, they sent that rocket to the to the moon and or not to the moon to Mars, and it was a uh, it was a big shit cart. <laughs> <laughs> they did actually just send something to Mars and landed it like last week. I just, I just, yes, they I did. did. We're now at the point in this podcast where I know I'm just listening to five minutes of setup <laughs> to a shit joke. <laughs> like, Here we go. You're gonna get there. I get. <laughs> The thing they just sent was to like see the. It was like for seismic stuff, like to see the inside of the. Yeah, planet. it's gonna dig mm -hmm. down into uh into the underneath Mars. That's pretty awesome. Space. So on the back, I'm gonna say before I eat this, I see Kyrie's already eating it, but some interesting stuff on the back. It says, uh, so it says this is real ice cream. We take the ice cream you know and love, with the power of freeze dry and create a yummy new snack, frozen in time yet not frozen in temperature. When you remove the water from ice cream, what do you have? A delicious, crunchy, yet creamy sweetness that melts in your mouth, sandwiched between two chocolatey wafer cookies. And then, I don't know if you guys have the same fun fact at the bottom, um, but it says only one-third of spacecraft sent to Mars have been successful, leading some scientists to wonder if there is a Martian Bermuda <laughs> Triangle or a great galactic ghoul <laughs> that likes to eat spacecraft. Mars red color is due to the iron oxide, also known as rust, and has the consistency of talcum powder. Why do they have a fun fact that's, like, clearly bullshit, and then they end it with, like, some actual science? You know, like, there's a great galactic ghoul eating. Oh, by the way, here's actual science about where the red color comes from. <laughs> well, I think they probably, and that might, first part might be true, they're just making a dumb joke. But that's kind of frightening to realize that they've been sending, I hope those are unmanned spacecrafts. <laughs> it's like... Shuttles with the people coming in, like just um, going missing. Like, well, Geiger, fire another one up. Do you think they've been sending people to Mars? No. <laughs> yes, they are unmanned. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what year do you think this is, real quick? <laughs> I mean, at some point, we got to send a human to Mars to check it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just checking it out, bro. <laughs> I know all kinds of stuff like space. Like, remember Neil Armstrong walked on the surface of the sun? <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is... Weird. Just obviously dry as fuck. <laughs> um. <laughs> is it weird that I kind of want to just, like, dunk it in, like, a bowl of water and see what happens? <laughs> That's not weird. I was definitely thinking that. 
but I think you'd be disappointed. Does that turn it back to an ice cream sandwich? <laughs> Here, do you want to eat something good? Just add water or buy something else. Geiger, uh, lead us off. Yeah, it was. I, it's it's a marvel of engineering, right? It's very cool that they can make this. Uh-huh. I'm impressed by. The structure, it looks like an ice cream sandwich, almost identically. Yep. Um, well, Geiger, according to the package, this is a real ice cream sandwich. So It's a true, yeah, it is an actual ice cream. Just take the moisture out. You know, it It tastes sweet overall. It doesn't taste, you can't really taste, to me, I can't taste too much difference between the cookie wafer and the ice cream in the middle. I don't quite see where they say it's, that's still that creamy flavor. It's just, it's just a, it's so dry. It's just a huge hunk of dry <laughs> stuff. And it has to be. It's space. I get it. <laughs> Don't at me, astronauts. Okay, I get it. Why? Why does it have to be? There's. They have water in space. <laughs> it's not like they dehydrate all the astronauts when they send them up there. <laughs> Isn't it much easier to eat on the ship because it's not like melting and getting all you know, like you're yeah, going to be storing us on a on a rocket? You can't. It'll be melted by the time it gets. Come on, like, NASA. Figure that brutal. shit out. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me have like um, a nine course gourmet meal while I'm uh, speeding through the stars at billions of miles an hour. You open up these dead lobsters from six months ago. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, look, here's the deal. I'm on Earth, okay? I can eat real ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> this is bullshit. No, uh, it, I, I'm, I'm giving it a dislike. There's a weird aftertaste to it. It is crunchy and dry AF. It's like eating a pumice stone. Uh, I just... <laughs> It, I don't hate it. It's it, it, The taste is sort of okay, but there's a weird aftertaste, and I'm just not digging it. Um, it also is not lactose-free in any way. It's still milk, from what I understand, so it could still potentially make me shit space rocks out my ass. So I'm giving it a dislike that. Will your poop come out like astronaut, ice cream, astronaut poop? <laughs> All, right. All right, Chad, what do you think? I like this more than I thought. I remembered actually not liking the astronaut ice cream the last time I had it, which was probably when I was 12. And so I was actually a little nervous going into this. Not nervous, but like, I didn't expect <laughs> to like it. I was like, oh no, what's going to oh happen? God, what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> because I figured if I didn't like it as a kid, then what are the chances I'm going to like it now? Pretty low, right? Because kids like everything because they're dumb. So. Right. Yep. But I actually kind of like the flavor. My main problem here is consistency and like, eatability right like it just it you it they say on the package it's probably going to be broken i open it up it is broken it's just crumbling into pieces as i try to put it in my mouth and like that's just not really like a convenient way to eat it uh so that's gonna dock it a little bit for me so but i did like the flavor more than i thought so i'm gonna go indifferent to that i'm really torn in between you guys uh i don't like it like, but I keep eating it. Like, it's strange. Like, I keep going back to take more bites. There's something about the flavor that's not terrible. But, yeah, it's just so dry. <laughs> so damn dry. And I guess that's the point. I mean, I suppose there's a reason that the only time you would really eat this is if you were, like, 200,000 miles from Earth. Um, <laughs> right. But I don't know. I guess it, maybe it is, maybe there's a nostalgia factor or something in here for me. That's making me not hate it. Uh, I'm gonna give it an indifferent too, oddly, oddly enough. Um, so two indifference and a dislike. So it's not exactly telling you to go get it, but um, it was kind of fun. I think it was kind of a fun thing to eat. So let's move next to the moon cheese. Uh, <laughs> this is a funny name for a thing. Moon now, cheese. why is this called moon cheese? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so it looks like moon cheese is. Maybe just the brand of the or brand or what I don't know. It says naturally crunchy moon cheese, and cheddar is the flavor, and it says it's 100% cheese, so it's just all cheese. That's the only thing in here. Yeah, they had they had a couple different flavors of cheese. Um, when I like a couple different types of cheese when I saw this at the store, but I just thought that cheddar we should you know go with like sort of the baseline rather than some sort of like fancier cheese. <laughs> at the top it says ingredients, just cheese. <laughs> and on the back it is true it's just cheddar cheese and they say they uh 100 percent. they they we crunchify 100 percent natural cheese into the tastiest all cheese snack possible on this planet at least mm. Ooh, it's um it's obviously a dry snack it does smell 
is a little off-putting to me. Not a oh. huge fan of the smell. I mean, is this basically astronaut cheese? <laughs> it's definitely not as dry as that. Um, it's the size of, I don't know, what's this the size of? Like a peanut M&M or something like that? Yeah, about the size of peanut M&M. It smells like astronaut ass. It's terrible. That's an <laughs> awful smell. Oh, my God. It smells like the shit card after 24 kids have been through it. <laughs> Oy vey. It doesn't taste terrible. Yeah, it actually tastes pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Taste is fine. That smell is just like rotten socks or something. I don't know what that <laughs> It's one of the things that actually... Oddly enough, the aftertaste is better than the taste at the start, I think. Hmm. I'm very confused by these. I know. The bigger the piece, the worse it tastes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Are they, they don't taste or smell anything like I expected, right? I kind of expected more of like a, maybe like a Cheetos taste or something, but maybe not quite as artificial. But it does kind of <laughs> taste... Like I took like I took a block of cheese, but then turned it into a weird consistency. You yeah, know? it's like <laughs> wetter than a Cheeto, um, but it's not wet. Like I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's yeah. kind of greasy almost. And I like how they they literally tell you on the front it's just cheese in there, and you somehow equated that to it being a Cheeto. You know, the <laughs> Cheetos are made of a lot aren't of shit, right? <laughs> yeah, aren't, aren't Cheetos one hundred percent cheese? It's yeah. It's like no. I, it, it's almost like they took a piece of cheese and just dehydrated it, but it still has that like almost greasy, um, like when you almost that wetness when you pick up like a raw piece of cheese. Right. If you look on the back, is actually the the name of the manufacturer is Nutra Dried. So it sounds like they make a lot of dried products. Nutra Dried Moon Cheese. Nutra Dried. That is like the stupidest brand name. Yeah, that sounds like a some sort of laboratory. It definitely tastes like real cheese. It's been a while since I ate a real piece of cheddar cheese because it makes me um, flatulent. But it's you're right. It just it's got this weird, like soury kind of taste after you're done eating it. The bag is resealable, so you can save it for later. Almost tastes like a dried cheese curd, maybe. No. Hmm. All right, Chad, you have the uh, tough task of starting this off here. I'm so conflicted with these things, like. Yeah, they, uh, we said they smelled bad, but then I kind of liked the taste. The consistency was pretty good, but then it was like sort of greasy, weirdly. But I, I kept eating them that whole time. I was just popping them in my mouth. I, you know, I ate a pretty decent amount, and I actually had to like force myself, like, okay, I'm gonna put this down, you know, and not do it anymore. Um, I, th I, th I actually kind of like these things. I think I want to do a different cheese flavor, though. I think it, this could be better with maybe like a Parmesan flavor. I think would really, would really go good with this. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, I think these are pretty good. I'm going to go like that. All right. I like that. Ooh, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm really torn. I, I, they're not bad. Like I don't feel that bad after I eat them, but the first bite I take is not good. Like I, at the, when my teeth first bite into each individual piece, that taste is not good. Um, and the smell is not good. Uh, the aftertaste, like I said, I like. Ooh, I on, I think you're right. Maybe on another flavor, I could like it, but I'm gonna have to say dislike because I went a couple more pieces, and each one was just making me not want to eat another piece after that. And I've now completely stopped and didn't eat all that many. Um, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give this a dislike. But I can really think of like my wife included, people who I think would really like this product. Uh, maybe just not for me. Geiger? Yeah, I'm going to have to side with you, Novak, and then, but I'm really not that conflicted. I dislike these. They are, they are not good. Um, the <laughs> smell is, I mean, I'm not trying to like overstate it, but the smell is bad. I mean, it's just like really not good at all when you open up the package. And that is off-putting to start. And then you chew them, and they're, they're a weird consistency, and they, I don't, they just have the sour taste to them. I don't know how to describe it. It's a really weird like I can, I have stopped eating them for a good two, three minutes now, and it's like I'm still chewing one. I get, it's, it just permeates my entire mouth with this weird sour cheese flavor. Um, again, I'm not a huge cheese eater anyway, so maybe that's kind of why it's maybe not made for me. I like, like I, like you said, I think there are people I, in my household that would like them. I just, I don't think I'm one of them. 
uh, it, this is a solid dislike for me. These are not good. All right. Well, that does put these two technically at a tie with the point system here uh, with a little different way of getting there. But, well, the Milky Way will have a chance to take home the gold after we go through our segment, which is a You Drank Debt. So, Chad, why don't you take us through the You Drank Debt? Yeah, so we were trying to think what does a, um, you know, a space-themed beverage that uh, that we could try. Um, and we were, you know, the grocery store was all out of Gleep Glorp juice. So uh, that <laughs> left us with having to, Jesus. So that left us with having to uh, try Tang. So we got Tang, which uh, was made famous by being, you know, a drink of, of astronauts. Um, it wasn't actually invented by NASA or anything like that, but... Um, but it was something I think that astronauts drank. But I did read a funny quote uh, when I was doing a little research here. There was just a news story the other day where somebody interviewed Buzz Aldrin, and <laughs> they asked him what he thought of Tang, and the quote was, quote, Tang sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Aldrin, man, a few words. So in this case, we <laughs> we wanted to try to find the smallest Tang possible at the grocery store and it's like even like a little can of tang you know like a coke sized can it says on the package that it makes 22 quarts and which is just like an insane of like <laughs> take me a hundred years to drink that so we found this one that's like i don't know it's the size of like maybe a shot glass or something and it has liquid in it and we're going to mix it here with uh, it just says one squirt in an eight ounce glass and this entire just shot glass size of thing makes 24 glasses somehow <laughs> uh so we all have our cups of water and we're gonna try making it here on the air i even on the air i even tried to um i brought a chopstick so that i could like stir it around a little oh. bit i don't know if we need to Ooh, that's a good I idea have a spoon, yeah i uh i measured out eight ounces of water to be oh, did, really did you? <laughs> being technically i filled sounded. a glass of water with some water i'm not worried <laughs> But I think it says one squirt, yeah. So or one squeeze, which feels like is variable from person to person. Scientific method. <laughs> yeah, that's not not exactly. Oh, it smells like super orangey. Mm -hmm. I, I do like that it says um, it's like they, on the side there they have the instructions and then they have a picture of a glass just full of this stuff, and it's like don't do this. You know what I mean? Like don't just drink straight from the thing. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't do this. I know you've bought this, but <laughs> just don't drink it. <laughs> Listen to Buzz Aldrin. Just don't do it. <laughs> it's Buzz Aldrin's picture. <laughs> don't do this, please. I'm begging you. They made me drink hey, this. Did they? What did they give you in the uh, cardboard box um, experiment where that teacher was trying to see all your wieners? <laughs> Were they giving what you did Viagra? They give us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like did for they give food? you food? Right. What'd you eat? I'm trying to remember. I think there was like halfway through where they like delivered us like some McDonald's or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just like space. It's just like a hand pops in through the airlock with just like a huge bag of uh, quarter pounders. But do or they like <laughs> dangle them from like fishing line like they're floating in the air and make you eat, make them, eat them? <laughs> yeah. Little McNuggets. All right, I've I've squeezed, I've mixed. Yeah, turn the glass orange mm -hmm. immediately. Um, let me go over our rating system here, since this is a drink of astronauts. We've got a, a three-point scale. So uh, <laughs> the ratings are going to be astronaut names, so of, of famous astronauts. <laughs> so starting at the top, the number one astronaut of all time, uh, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> the number one. Sounds objective. <laughs> The number one astronaut of all time. I was, so, <laughs> Look, guys, I just saw this movie First Man, and Ryan Gosling plays him, and man, Neil Armstrong was dreamy. Oh. So dreamy. You mean he was a real snack? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, tasty. Um, middle rating, I'm going to go Jim Lovell, because uh, everybody likes Tom Hanks, but, I mean, he didn't even make it to the moon, so, you Loser. know, it's kind of like, what the fuck you doing, dude? Yeah. Bottom rating, <laughs> even though I love him, but he clearly doesn't like Tang, so bottom rating, we got to go Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to do something a lot more off color than that, so I'm glad <laughs> that was your choice. Like, you guys have been chasing Tang a while now, right? 
pick some astronaut who like died in an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom level, the the crew of the Challenger. <laughs> I, I literally thought, like, for you, we all know the best astronaut ever, and you're going like, to say something like Buzz Lightyear or something like <laughs> <laughs> This has a real tang to it. I don't know if maybe I mixed too much in. But uh, me too. <laughs> it definitely has. It's very <laughs> But I've lost movement of my jaw. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the first sip I took is almost like, when you have a really oversaturated Kool-Aid, you can almost still taste the crystals in there. It was just like a <laughs> kick in the face of orange flavor. Yeah, I think I needed half a squeeze, but I gave it a full squeeze. I, I actually gave it two squeezes. Because <laughs> I don't follow directions. <laughs> I used two ounces of water and eight squeezes. <laughs> Well, I did the first squeeze, and then I was like, oh, this kind of isn't really orange enough. So then I did another one, and I think I did the second one for way too long. Cool. But it just tastes like Kool-Aid. It just tastes like orange Kool-Aid, yeah. basically. Yes, that's pretty much it, right. I don't see how this is any different from Kool-Aid. And, <laughs> and I don't know how... I'm not sure if it generally is stronger when when uh, used exactly as prescribed, or if it's just that I squeeze you, too much in. Hold on, Novak, you, <laughs> you got this tank prescribed for you? Like a doctor? <laughs> it's from Chad's old teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now turn your head and cough. He got, he got on the microphone while we were in there, and he was like, now this is the part where you all go into the back room and take a tang shower. <laughs> <laughs> Now take this bottle, it's cylindrical shaped, and squeeze it into the cup. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it feels like there's sugar sitting at the back of my throat. Like yeah. someone just poured a spoonful of sugar onto my esophagus. When's the last time you guys drank Kool-Aid? Because I'm trying to remember if this is what Kool-Aid tastes like. It's been a long time since I've had it. Uh, a couple years. Yeah, a couple years. I had it a couple years ago at some restaurant, actually. <laughs> it was like... What? <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> was that La Francaise? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, guys, it was not my best honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... No, it was... Um, it was a soul food restaurant, and they had, like, some special Kool-Aid flavor that they were advertising, so I got it. <laughs> Country yeah. gravy Kool-Aid. Right. Uh, so, um, th so surprise, this is the part of the podcast where now we all open this and squeeze it directly into our mouths <laughs> and then try it out. You guys want to do that? Oh, yeah. All right. I'll do it. Are we actually doing this? I am. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, my God. That's way worse than I thought it was going to be. Oh, I think I'm getting actual heartburn just from that one. <laughs> <coughs> oh. Chad looks like he's just taking a face full of pepper spray. That was the worst idea I've ever had. That was so bad. <coughs> oh, clean okay, down don't do that. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> don't try this at home. Well, now the regular tang tastes better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to wash that taste out with a nice, refreshing glass of tang. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Um, I'll go first. It's fine. It's Kool-Aid. It's like a very sugary Kool-Aid. Um, orange is not the greatest flavor of this type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'd be more likely to drink like a strawberry tang or something like that. Great. Which I don't, don't know if that exists, but it's not terrible. It's just a very sugary drink. I'm going to go with a James Lovell. <laughs> <laughs> a gagger? Hold on. <laughs> Let me take another squeeze and find out. <laughs> Let me take another squeeze and the citric acid can burn through my esophagus. Um, yeah, it's. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think, like you said, it's the more the orange flavor. If this was something like a berry flavor or grape, like Chad said, I think it tastes a lot better. That said, it is just like sugary Kool Aid. So uh, yeah, Jim Lovell for me too. This is. <laughs> The weirdest writing schedule ever. <laughs> you know, guys, I gotta say, this Kool Aid is a lot like a gym level. Uh, but no, I, yeah, it's fine, but it's not good. It's not great. I wouldn't like. I'll I'll give this to my kids, but I really probably won't have any more myself. I don't think. Chad, I don't think anyone like over eighteen years should ever drink this shit. 
this stuff, <laughs> this stuff is bad. This is definitely like a drink for kids or astronauts. Yeah, or astronauts. I'm gonna agree <laughs> with Buzz Aldrin. Tang sucks, and then I'm gonna give this a rating of a Buzz Aldrin. This is not good. <laughs> All right, so uh, you kids might like Tang, but probably no more than they would like Kool-Aid. To, to all the 10-year-olds listening to this podcast, go out and buy some Tang. Squirting that just the Tang into my mouth plain it was like, you ever eat something so sour or so sweet that one of your eyelids just involuntarily, clo- involuntarily closes <laughs> and you're just like having a mini stroke? It was like, oh, God. Don't do I it. I would be really interested to try like the squeeze kool-aid which i see they make now too and to see how that compares um because i don't remember ever having the powder tang um yeah. to know if there's a difference so what we're rating here was just the squeeze one uh so maybe give it to your kids but you'd probably be better off just getting them kool-aid so that does it for you drank that and we have one snack left one space snack And it's the Milky Way Simply Caramel Bar. So it's different from your standard Milky Way in that um, it's only caramel, I'm pretty sure. Normally Milky Way is what? Caramel and nougat or something? Yes. Right. Is Milky Way basically... I don't think I've had a Milky Way in a really long time. Is it basically like Snickers minus the peanuts or something? Uh, Yeah, well, there's just such a, a larger caramel i think ratio and milky way ah uh, um ratio is different you're right but yeah it's, it's it's ingredients wise not far off from a snickers bar because i don't remember particularly liking milky way it's more like a three musketeers with a layer of caramel in it is easier to wait it's like that fluffy nougat if i remember correctly mm, yeah, i yeah. always like the milky they have midnight milky ways which are like dark chocolate on the outside and i like those this is pretty thin correct it's a lot of caramel. Now, it's not as sweet as I was expected, but I don't know if that's because I just shot, like, <laughs> some concentrated tang directly out of my tongue. Yeah, you need to white balance your tongue out again. It's not... The the caramel isn't as runny as, like, you get right. when you eat, like, a caramello, where it's, like, that real gooey, soft caramel. It probably couldn't be, because it would just be everywhere with the size of this thing. I don't like that runny caramel. Do you Me guys neither. like that? No. I like caramellos. I don't like how sticky and gooey it is. And it's not like super, um, it's not like rock. Sometimes caramel can be like rock hard or whatever. It's not, it's not like that either. I would describe this caramel as galactic because it's a Milky Way, right? No. Yep. I would describe your science teacher as rock hard. (laughs) (laughs) I absolutely knew that was what the joke was. (laughs) Yeah, he was just. Pounding his rock hard uh, until it became Milky Way. Uh, watching <laughs> you guys do your science experiments. I had a real milky shorts after the experiment was done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right um, <clears throat> Geiger going to lead us off again. It's on our fourth one here. So what do you think of the Milky Way Simply Caramel? I think it's good. Um, I was worried to be too much caramel. Uh, to me, caramel is a nice accent flavor or like ingredient to something but i don't always like like a, just pure caramel um but this is actually like we've talked about the consistency is good it's not super gooey but it's not like impossible to chew it's kind of right in the middle i don't like it as much as a regular milky way i do like the nougat um to be there but i think this is good it's a solid candy bar this is a solid like that for me this is tasty it's a it's the same chocolate you would get from milky way plus some um a decent amount of car- a lot of it but a good caramel so yeah like that all right there's a like chad what do you think pretty much agree yeah i i don't know if i like it more or less than a milky way because like i said uh, i hadn't had one in so long i'm gonna have to go back and try a regular milky way and see because this is this is surprisingly good uh kind of didn't really expect to to like it necessarily but um it's good the caramel's not overwhelming flavor's good so yeah like that excellent snack Ah, oh, I really wanted to let this in the door, but I'm I'm very I'm disappointed in it. I was super psyched when I bought it um, to try it. I like a Milky Way. A Milky Way is a, a a solid like for me, and this is really missing the extra part, the nougat with the caramel. And I can't I can't help but compare it to that. 
because um, they have the same name on the front. And it's just a little too much caramel with nothing else to it. The caramel tastes fine. The chocolate tastes fine. But to me, it's missing something, and I'm going to uh, downgrade it to an indifferent for that. I, I wouldn't buy this again and eat it. Um, someone handed it to me at a party. I would eat it. <laughs> but that's probably the only circumstance. If you were like a NASA convention and someone handed it to you? If we were, right. If I was uh, in the first settlement on Mars and someone handed it to me, I would eat it. But <laughs> until that happens, <laughs> I'm going to pass it up. Uh, so it still is the clear winner for today, though, uh, out of the three snacks. So the Milky Way is the winner. And that is our uh, number one choice of astronauts around the world <laughs> is the Milky Way Simply Caramel. Yeah, once again, we have a very famous uh, mass-produced product that right. we're it much better than everything else. I was going to say, we needed an episode to get ourselves back into uh, Big Chocolate's good graces, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of in the bag, though. We were, I mean, it was compared to just dry-ass ice cream sandwich and weird, slimy, <laughs> sock-smelling cheese. I don't think it's... Um, was that hard to fight. So what would be the biggest issue with being you and Shaq being the only two people on a Mars colony? <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> um, why, why am I on the Mars with Shaq? <laughs> There's a lot of things that would have to go wrong for that to happen. But <laughs> Shaq floating through these tiny ass corridors in the space station like, Oh damn! I'm stuck again because he's just gigantic. Although, did we did we t- bring Shaq to Mars so that we could finally dunk on him in the lower gravity? <laughs> <laughs> this is my elaborate plan to just posterize <laughs> Shaq. <laughs> just, this, this picture of two dudes in spacesuits and you're giving a thumbs up to the camera. As you're... <laughs> I, I wasted billions of dollars investing in this like space program just so I could bring Shaq to Mars and dunk on him. <laughs> that must that's probably Elon Musk's big plan actually. Right. There's no way Shaq wants to go to Mars either. <laughs> no. <laughs> the whole trip is filled with being in small spaces and he's the largest yeah. man there is. Yeah. Shaq is a guy who wants to eat a lot of food at once, not chase little globules of jello around the fucking hallway so he can have a meal. Like he just wants to eat what, seventeen pounds of pasta or whatever he eats a day. Um, he would be handy in case we do go to Mars and there are angry Martians. Like, they'd probably think twice about effing with Shaq. I mean, he's that's true. A giant monster. Do you of a think man. that uh, the space flights just have Jello floating around? <laughs> <laughs> well, every time they see shots of like those guys eating, they're always like flipping the food up in the air and then like sucking it into their mouth and stuff. I'm sure they're doing that for show. I'm sure they hate like in real life. They're just like, I'm like angrily slamming it in their mouth, but. Yeah, <laughs> mostly angry, probably. <laughs> They're like, Tang sucks, give me more of the sugar water. <laughs> I want to know how all of the astronauts came back with any teeth if if they ate Tang and ice cream sandwiches all day. <laughs> they had a floating toothpaste or something. They probably all came back with the diabetes. Oh, well, that'll do it for <laughs> Good ending point, right? <laughs> Speaking of diabetes... You can find us on social media. If you <laughs> if you want to share stories about space, which planet you like the best, uh, if you've ever been secretly filmed by a middle school science teacher under the guise of uh, furthering your education, uh, <laughs> uh, let us know about it at uh, you tried at gmail dot com. Uh, we're on YouTube. We are on SoundCloud. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook with a YouTube or with a You Tried That group. Hashtag You Tried That on Twitter. You could also visit NASA and protest the unfair abuse of children. We're on to you, NASA. <laughs> we get it. We know what you're doing. Quit sending us your scientists that just make us shit inside of small, movable carts <laughs> with our pants down while cameras veer up our buttholes, all right? We get it. 
<laughs> all those all those kids now have diabetes too from just eating <laughs> floating quarter pounders. <laughs> I do, quarter pounders were floating. I do like how they had to make everything on, on fishing line. so yeah. realistic that they floated you down the hallway and into this bathroom so you couldn't just walk down the hall. And then it's like, what do we feed him? Ah, oh, give him a fucking Big Mac. I don't know. Like, it's like, <laughs> But speaking of stuff, you go to uh, go to Twitter this week and answer answer our poll, oh. answer our question of the week, which is which uh, which planet would you want to dunk on Shack on? Let us know. <laughs> Probably one of the gas planets. Hot debate this one. Yeah, <laughs> on Jupiter. You just dunk him and you just keep going. <laughs> what? Yeah. A planet with gravity. <laughs> oh, you just jump up and you just keep floating away. You're like, no. <laughs> Uh, now is Pluto a planet? Didn't they go back and forth on that? I think they said not until someone dunks on Shaq. There. <laughs> 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 All right, fair. That's fair. Yeah, uh, recently accused sexual harasser Neil deGrasse Tyson downgraded it from a planet, and his criteria was nobody's dunked on Shaq on it yet. <laughs> Honestly, guys, if I had to pick one planet I'd want most to dunk on Shaq, it would be Earth, because I make millions of dollars being a good basketball player. <laughs> Who's paying you millions of dollars to dunk on a well, 50-some-year-old Shaq? Well, okay, not Shaq anymore. But that would mean I could dunk. <laughs> you need other basketball skills. <laughs> well, all right, fine. If I can dunk on Shaq, it just means when we go to the gym, I can dunk on you guys, too. It would be fun. <laughs> no, you can only dunk on Shaq. Shaq, that's your only basketball skill. Like, I'm, I'm terrible at basketball. Shaq walks in and I just throw down a, a jackhammer right in front of him. Yeah. Remember when uh, we used to talk about when someone passed up Wilt Chamberlain's scoring record? <laughs> yeah. That they were going to... That someone was going to dig up Chamberlain's skeleton, <laughs> attach <laughs> attach it to their body, <laughs> and go dunking with it, yeah, so it counted. So like, Chamberlain could continue to score. What? <laughs> we were talking about how they would exhume Wilt Chamberlain's corpse and then like weekend at Bernie's him to score more points. But like we we joked that we the guy would like throw one dunk and the skeleton would just shatter and crumble a heap on the court. <laughs> On why that would even be legal as an NBA. <laughs> now entering the game, this guy with a cadaver taped to him. <laughs> what? <laughs> we were That's the weirdest fucking college. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, guys, it's clear we would need to bring Shaq to space because I don't know if you saw that documentary. Um, I think it was called Space Jam where they had those right. monsters that were really good at basketball. So I, we would need Shaq mm -hmm. and potentially Wilt Chamberlain's reanimated corpse just to stand a shot. Which is a better movie, Space Jam or Weekend at Bernie's? I've never seen Weekend at Bernie's. I don't know. I've seen Space Jam. I'd rather watch Weekend at Bernie's again. There's talk that they're going to uh, bring back Space Jam. Like, I, think, I think LeBron wants to make a sequel to Space Jam. I think there's also a weekend at Bernie's with LeBron in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys are one guy on each side of LeBron making him dunk. Weekend at Bronnie's? It's an it, it's a, it's a inversion where he's taped to them and he's making them dunk. He's just jumping and they're going, ah! And they get pulled up there. <laughs> he's got one corpse hanging off each arm it's and he's just corpses. like slamming balls through the hoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay that'll do it for our space episode <laughs> but we'll be back next time when we'll be trying out three brand new snacks deuces yep